go to the school. Click. What are you working on, Nutley? Only the greatest amusement park known to Squirrel. Nutley's Land of Wonder Fun! Ah! Oh, very exciting, Nutley. Where's this amusement park going to be built? In the meadow, after we get rid of all that pesky grass. But what will the rabbits eat? What they always eat. Grass. But you want to get rid of the grass. So, the rabbits have to hop a little further to find some. No biggie. Oh, but it is a biggie, Nutley. Getting rid of the grass can lead to all kinds of changes to our home. We might even lose all of our acorns. Uh, Professor, grass and our precious acorns have nothing to do with each other. You might need to sit down. You're thinking too hard. Hey, come on, just have a seat. Let me explain, Nutley. All things that are alive, like animals and plants, are called living things. Understand? Living thing, living thing, living thing. Good, Nutley. And do you remember what we call the total number of squirrels living in an area like ours? Yes, Professor, I do. It's a population of squirrels. And there isn't only one population of animals and plants in our area. There are lots of them, like rabbits, deer, oak trees, fungi. Impressive, Nutley. I like being as impressive as possible. Well, did you also know that all living things in our area make a community? Really? We have our own community? It's not just for people? That's right, Nutley. Okay, but I still don't see what getting rid of a little grass has to do with our precious nuts disappearing. Please tell me that was just my imagination and our acorns didn't disappear! It was just your imagination, Nutley. But while you're using your imagination, let's talk a little more about our community of plants and animals. Our community is part of something bigger. There's something bigger than our community? Where? If you look around, you will see that in addition to the living things around us, there are non-living things. Non-living things? Yes, things like sunlight and water and soil and rocks. Anything that's not alive is called a non-living thing. So what's the bigger thing you were talking about? Well, all of the living things in an area put together with the non-living things that the living things use, that's all called an ecosystem. In an ecosystem, when one thing changes, it can affect many other parts. Like this tree, for example. This is a cottonwood tree. Because it needs a lot of water, Cottonwoods usually live near streams, like this one. Now, Nutley, imagine this stream dries up. Imagining? Changing a non-living thing in our ecosystem, like the water in the stream, can cause another part of the ecosystem, the cottonwood tree, to die because it can't get enough water. You see, the living and non-living things are connected. Okay. But I still don't understand how getting rid of the grass will make our acorns go away. Now imagine all the grass is gone in the meadow. It's just a field of dirt. Imagining? All the rabbits, field mice, and insects that rely on grass will either move away or die off. If that happens, what will the foxes and the snakes eat? And if there are no foxes around, all of the squirrels in the forest would want to live right here with us, where it's safe. And there go our acorns! <gasps> I don't mean to discourage your plans, Nutley. I'm only saying that it's important to understand how a change to one part of an ecosystem can affect other parts. Instead of an amusement park, maybe I'll just put a swing in. Yeah, this will be much better. Nutley's swing of wonder fun. Oh, very exciting, Nutley. <laughs>